welcome back to my shop. Today we got a fun little project that uh, not be it's well within the the uh, skill of any beginner uh, turner. We're going to turn some mushrooms, uh, maybe more than one. Uh, they're a lot of fun. You can do different things with them, as I'll show later on in the video. Some of the things you can use them use them for. Uh, let's start with wood. You know, you can use green wood. You can use dried wood. You can use branches for natural edge. Uh, I don't know what this is. I think it's hickory. Uh, you could use spalted wood uh, does does very nice. Uh, I, I showed you this one out of box elder. Still got some color in it, which is uh, very nice. You can actually use uh, burl scraps and and use a contrasting piece of wood. Do some joinery between the stem and, and the top. So lots of different choices on on wood. Cutting small round the objects on the bandsaw can be extremely hazardous because you have an unsupported cut. It causes it to spin. Uh, when you're going starting it, it spin when you're coming through the backside. One safe way to deal with that is simply use use a hand clamp and to to hold it very securely, it keeps your fingers away and holds it tight. Another way is to make you a, a simple jig goes on your your bandsaw like this. Doesn't have to have a runner on it. It could be just as simple as 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 this and hand maneuver it. If you got pieces a little bit larger, certainly you can make it a larger one. Like like this one. Stay safe, my friends. Let's try one out of box elder. I've got a little scrap, very lightweight. Get the speed up a little bit. Turn it around. round enough to put a put a tenon back here I'm using a skew as a scraper with a pin and cut use my standard 50 millimeter jaws I know I've got a good fit because I can't possibly get a piece of paper in between the jaws and it's that mechanical fit there that really makes for a strong chuck hold. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish finish turning this round. Just speed up a little bit, about 2,000. Light cut. This box elder should have some pretty color to it, which will make for, I think, an interesting, interesting look. So let's, this time we're going to come up here. Actually, we're going to turn this at about a 45 degree angle. Again, I'm going to come in there with uh, a half inch spindle gouge. Some people might prefer a bowl gouge, and that'll work too. I'm more comfortable with that. Speed up a little bit. Drop the handle for a pin cut. Take another cut next to it so it doesn't bind. Now I'm going to come back to that spindle gouge and start smoothing this a, a little bit on the stem. Putting pressure on the on the tool with my thumb on the tool rest. So I don't get any bounce. 
Come in from the other direction. Speed up a little bit. Make the base a little bit smaller than the, than the cap, but enough to give it some stability. Parting cut, take the base. Move slightly so the outside will be a little bit uh, basically still on the rock. Let's see if it needs any sanding to speak of, or should I just leave it like that? And I've got a little rough edge there, so I will probably just nip that chamfer just a little bit. There we go. And I think I'm going to go ahead and take some 220 and just and just push it a little bit. A finish will not hide bad sanding. Ever. Don't ever think it'll hide two marks or bad sanding because it won't. I'm just going to use some of this shellac based friction polish because it's fast and easy on these small kinds of projects. Faster than my normal finish of thin wax antique oil, which take a while. Get a little heat going to drive off the alcohol. Do keep in mind when you're using a friction uh, shellac-based friction polish, although it'll dry to the touch in a few minutes or with heat. You need to let it cure for 24 hours before you get fingerprints on it or you will uh, prevent it from being as shiny as it could be by, by your fingers. Really thin parting tool. Slow the speed down a little bit. sander, get rid of that little nub on the bottom and we're good to go. I like that red color. Looks nice. Okay, I've already turned this twin centers and put a, a tenon on it. I'm using my 35 millimeter jaws to put that in and I'm going to try something a little different. I'm just going to pull it out just a little bit, like maybe an eighth of an inch and change the shape of what's going to be the cap on this mushroom. I got an old uh, purse of my wife's that uh, the dog chewed up, so it's hopefully that'll give us a little better contrasting background. So let's make sure, turn it, make sure it clears. I'm going to use a uh, half an inch uh, spindle gouge and just gradually pick up the cut, focused on about two o'clock. Light cuts. I'm going to turn the speed up to about 2,000. Somewhere in that area. Nothing magic about that number. This is a piece of green uh, fog wood. I get some small trees that were taken out of my backyard. Little bitty ones. Uh, it might be hickory. I don't know what this is. Tell you the truth. All right, so a nice smooth. It's got the pith going through it, but it's it's somewhat dry. All right, so now I'm gonna undercut the cap a little bit. Keep some of this natural edge. Brush that away. So I'm gonna come in from the side with a bevel going 90 degrees and I'm just going to come under that natural edge by maybe an eighth of an inch. I may sneak up on it. Still cutting a little bit of air because this is multi-axis running off the edge a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Okay, got a little natural edge. Cut away some of it. Um, hmm. I guess that's the problem with that natural edge. 
if you try to do a multi-axis that you may lose some of the bark around the edge. So I'm going to go ahead and square this back up. This is kind of an experiment that y'all get to go along with me on. And so now I'm just going to undercut it. Now it ought to be a little easier to engage that cut. Now I think I'm just going to say to heck with that and just come up under a little bit more and forget the bark. Made from a scrap of high speed steel toolkit from Harbor Freight and I'm just going to ease this in at an angle. Try to go back to that uh, multi-axis on the on that stem. Let's see how that works. Yeah, let's twist it just a little bit, not a lot, just enough to give it a little bit of character. particular mushroom, I'm going to install this on a base, so I'm going to put a tenon on it. Use this parting tool a little bit like a skew here, make the stem just a little bit bigger. enough might actually bring this up just a tiny little bit or it's a little thicker and then it's gonna slow the speed down I don't like to part off faster than about 1200 so let me Come in here, kind of catch this. Okay. And there's that little mushroom. Now let me show you what we're going to do with it. I should have chamfered the edge a little bit, but I can do that with, with a skew. We're going to drill a hole in a piece of scrap wood. You know, there's any number of different scraps that we can we could do this too. Uh, it could be what you might call a, a cookie <laughs> uh, that's been cut out of a, a block of wood. 
Uh, in this case, I'm going to use the scrap from I picked up off the ground near my uh, chainsaw. I've got this area. block. I've got a drill with a 3 8 inch Forstner bit in it. And we're just going to put a hole in there. I'm going to put it at a slight angle. Could be part of a mushroom farm or what have you. Let's just work that in there a little bit. Here's a couple of other mushroom ideas. How about a refrigerator magnet using a rare earth magnet, maybe five sixteenths of an inch in the bottom. Easy to pull, small, but, but very nice looking. How about a box? This one's out of bread from Pear. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.